What is up everyone? It's me Anthony and I am back to talk to you again about another Apple Plus TV series. I guess this channel is just the Apple TV series review channel. And Apple has recently established itself as the go-to place for the latest and greatest for sci-fi TV series. With releases like Dark Matter, Consolation, and Sugar, all that just came out this year by the way. So needless to say, if you are into sci-fi, then you know what streaming service that you need to definitely get. This brings us to the latest sci-fi series, Sunny, starring Rashida Jones, that tells the story of a woman named Susie whose husband and son vanish after a plane crash, and she is gifted a robot named Sunny as she tries to figure out what happened to her family. Honestly, you know, the only reason I'm watching this show is because of Rashida Jones. You know, it's not Catherine Rosita Jones anymore. It's Rosita Jones. You know, you millennials know what I'm talking about. But hey, I'm not the only dude that's weirdly obsessed with Rosita Jones. I mean, Donald Glover even made a song about him trying to attempt to make a song for Rosita Jones because he was overwhelmed by her beauty. I don't know how that has anything to do with the show but hey that's just something i wanted to share so if you are new to the channel i talk about movies and tv shows that i think are interesting and hopefully you do too it's just a conversation between people that just love movies and tv shows and i just talk to you like i'm just your friend that you haven't seen in a while and you're like ha I remember why I stopped talking to him because he liked the prequel Star Wars films. So like and subscribe to the channel and without further ado, let's get into the recap of episode one of Sunny titled, He's in Refrigerators. The recap opens with people running and screaming as a robot attacks a man with a chair, killing him. The robot looks a lot like our robot Sunny, but we find out later on that there are a lot of robots in this universe that are the same model as Sunny and look the same. Also, when I used the audio description, the robot was called 17, so I think it's safe to assume that this robot that killed this guy isn't Sunny. But you know how this goes, you know, they could uh, make some weird twist and then my prediction or my confirmation or something that I think is right is wrong. So. Uh, be on the lookout for that. We then jump to Susie and her mother-in-law as they learn about the missing flight her husband and her son were on and are joined by the rest of the passengers fallen family. Susie then joins a gathering with other families who are participating in group therapy where they call their loved ones who are on flight 405 so that they can mourn. They go around the room and start calling their loved ones each call goes to voicemail, but when it comes to Susie's turn, her call keeps ringing. We'll go into more detail with this scene later on in the video. If you are impatient though, and you want to know my thoughts on this scene in particular, you can jump to the theory section of this video. That's where I'm gonna be talking about all the theories and uh, the questions that I have for this episode and the series as a whole. As Susie and her mother-in-law are leaving, they see a man handing out gifts. Susie's mother-in-law says that he is part of the Yakuza and that they're always taking advantage of people in situations like these hoping that they can get something in return as Susie is walking home she runs into a co-worker of her husband Mr. Tanaka he tells Susie that he has a gift for her from her husband a robot named Sunny Susie said there must be a mistake because her husband worked in refrigerators and she hates robots. But Mr. Tanaka says that the refrigerator division moved overseas years ago. Susie agrees to keep Sunny but tells her to go to sleep as she continues to mourn the loss of her family. After a few hours, Susie decides to talk to Mr. Tanaka in person and ends up going to a company Christmas party at the company where her husband worked. Emotech. Not being able to find Mr. Tanaka, Susie makes her way into an area known as the Sakamoto Incubator, and once inside, Susie walks down a corridor with small glass-walled rooms on each side. She comes to the end of the corridor and enters a yellow room with small dogs in it, and she sees what looks like blood stains on the carpet as well as blood stain track marks. After seeing this, being confused and surprised, Susie goes to a bar where her and her husband met and starts a conversation with a new bartender named Mixie. Mixie tells her that ever since her and her girlfriend broke up, that she has been doing adult things with the bot and that she has a dealer that provides her code so that she can make the bot do different things. Blah, TMI, TMI, my friends. TMI? 
too much information. Uh, it's just easier to say TMI. I used to say don't go there, but that's lame. Yeah, it's, it's one of those shows, guys. Mixie asked Susie if she heard about the story about the politician who got crushed by the bot, and she suggests that it might not have been an accident. Susie leaves the bar and starts to walk home, and then we see a man with a ponytail watching videos of Susie, the same man that we saw behind her in line at the grocery store. He then sends the video files to someone and says, we are on her and she is alone. Susie gets home and sees bot track marks from her spilled wine, similar to the marks that she saw in the incubator room. Susie takes Sunny to a bridge and tries to throw her over into the water, but she is too heavy for her and she decides just to leave Sunny on the bridge. Back at home, Susie discovers a photo of the politician who was crushed by the bot that fell from the stairs, and in the photo, she sees bloody track marks on the floor similar track marks that she has been seeing throughout the episode. Susie goes to sleep and wakes up to Sunny greeting her with cookies and Sunny gets a bat to try to hit Sunny with it but before Susie can hit her with it Sunny mimics Masa's kissing gesture he made right before he got on flight 405. In shock Susie sits down and asks Sunny to keep making the gesture and Sunny says to Susie can't you see that I was made for you in the episode in. And that was the first episode of Sunny. And these episodes are pretty short to my surprise. It's kind of a refresher from the last couple of shows that I've been watching where there's like 45 to 50 minute plus episodes. Kind of got tiring, especially if you want to do something like this on YouTube and do some recaps. You know, you want to turn them out pretty fastly and have some time to do some other stuff. So these little 22 minute, 30 minute episodes are really nice. And I will be talking about episode two tomorrow. I know the first two episodes released, but I'm just doing them one at a time because I, I like doing that. But as far as my impression of the first episode of this series, I really enjoyed it. I do like the mixture of the mystery element mixed with the humor of this show if the humor it doesn't hit for you then this probably isn't going to be the show for you but there also is that element like i said of the mystery behind it so maybe if the the comedy isn't going for you you can just piggyback off of the mystery and the drama of what is going on with masa and zen and the whole like family uh, dynamic of what's going on here and the robots and the emotech and all that stuff maybe that can carry you along for me uh, i like both elements of it i like the mystery i like the humor and of course i like rashida jones so what this is a show for me <laughs> another thing that actually caught me off guard in the show is the practical effects there's a lot of practical effects in here particularly with the robots that we've been seeing and there's different robots other than just the sunny model that we've seen we saw one that kind of looks like a like the robots that we have now, at least the ones in my area, I live in California, I live in the Bay Area, and we do have these little robots that look like Doctor Who dialect rejects kind of thing. I hate them. They, they scare me. They terrify me. But we have robots like that, but they have like faces, animated faces that are creepy. And I like that they are using that practical effect effect on them. And they also have that CGI effect on them for their faces. I think it's a good blend of the two type of things. And the CGI in this show is so good, in my opinion, that at points I was like, oh wait, that's actually CGI. That's cool. And, and I feel like that's what CGI is supposed to be and do. It's not supposed to be obvious. You know, you're, you're not supposed to go into a show or a movie and sit down and you're like, oh man, I can't wait to see what the Avengers do this time. And you look at it and you're like, dang, that, that CGI is really bad really bad this distracts you but of course guys let me know what you think in the comments down below about episode one of sunny did you like it did you hate it are you a fan of rashida jones if you're not don't even comment that you're not because you're gonna get kicked off you're gonna get now we're going into the theory section of the video and this is where i just talk about some theories that i had for this episode and the series as a whole and maybe some questions and just me rambling off so if you don't like a person rambling in a video about something that you wanted to hear you might want to click off or or comment down below that you don't like that because that helps the channel too so the first thing that i want to bring up is the question of is masa and zen alive and what's with the continuous ringing when Susie calls masa's phone it's like continuously ringing what what does that mean and short answer i think masa and zen are still alive i think they are being captured by someone 
And my theory is that it's the Yakuza. And the reason why I think that is in this episode, they put a emphasis on Yakuza and then we never see them through again in this entire episode. So I was wondering why would they emphasize that this Yakuza person here and Susie, you know, has this interaction with this Yakuza person twice in this episode. First time she sees him, he's kind of like fighting with like some busboy or something like that. And then the next time is when she's leaving the whole therapy session and she sees him outside handing like some bag of cookies or something like that to everybody and he gives her a look so i think the yakuza is going to play a bigger part in this show if you do watch the trailer for this show that was released a couple of days ago you do see that there might be some implications of like the yakuza taking Susie and like interrogating her and asking her where Masa is and everything. So I think that's where we're gonna go with this thing. I think Yakuza is either looking for Masa or they actually have Masa and Zen and they want more information or they want the bot, they want Sunny or something like that. That's what I think. But let me know what you think in the comments down below about that theory. Do you think the Yakuza has Masa and Zen or do you think it's some other entity altogether? Let me know in the comments down below. And the last thing that I want to talk about is the Ponytail Man. Now, I didn't know he had a ponytail until I looked closer and I was like, oh, he has a ponytail. But we see this guy behind Susie in the grocery store and he's kind of like watching the whole report about the crash the disappearance of the flight and he's like oh tragic and then Susie looks behind him and is like huh what's, what's going on and now we see that he has have live surveillance camera his cameras are pretty good by the way really good quality but they're also weirdly placed <laughs> but I think he somehow is able to hack into the robots all the little bots and use their feed to track Susie. And I think he might also be the dealer that Mixie was telling Susie about. Or he can be Yakuza, or he could be both. And that's what I'm going with right now. He could be both. But let me know what you think about the Ponytail Man. It's funny that we're calling him that, but that's what we're gonna do. And let me know in the comments down below what you think his reasoning behind following Susie is. Is he after Sunny? Is he after Masa? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, as a reminder, I am going to be doing an episode two recap for Sunny that is coming out tomorrow. So be sure to subscribe and like this video and like other videos and just watch all my videos. <laughs> so you can be up to date and be notified when that does come out. And as always guys, keep watching.